beer. And real quick, Winona, I see you. Yeah, uh, I I wouldn't I wouldn't last very long either. She said that she wouldn't she wouldn't last longer than the first hour. I don't think I would either. Like, I don't know. I totally. Oh yeah, okay. I'm gonna kill myself, and then they're like, oh. Also, you can't kill yourself. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, <sighs> fun, fun. I don't know. <laughs> it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, same, Samantha. I, I don't know that that I could handle. It. I like. I'd like to be like, yeah, I'm a tough bitch. I could handle a ton, but I'm not. <laughs> Actually, earlier today, I tried to <laughs> I tried to open a mayonnaise jar, like for a long time by myself, and then I had to go ask Nate for help, and it, <laughs> it was it was really sad. <laughs> I don't feel like that qualifies me being able to stand up to a Mord Sith for torture, though. No. Bring it on, Denna. I got that mayonnaise open in, like, three tries. No, I know. <laughs> it just, I don't know. It's something about it was like, okay, I tried to be tough, but I, it didn't even work. Like, just opening mayonnaise. I can't even be tough for that, not, let alone standing <laughs> up to torture. She would, I mean, okay, I kind of picture it like when you're a child and you're about to be spanked. And I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I got the wooden spoon, and so I'd I'd be fearless in front of my mom until she went, okay, and then she'd turn around, and I knew she was going for the spoon. It's just like Denna pulling out the ajil for the first time and be like, okay, okay, I give. What do you want to know? I'll tell you anything. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know you slowly revert back to a child. Yeah. Oh, oh, that didn't work nearly as well as I thought. Over you. I wear more beer for this podcast. <sighs> Cheers, everybody. Sad. Well, in honor of the, what I imagine to be dark, dark red outfit that Denna is wearing right now, we are going to be drinking Burble. <laughs> <laughs> and it is tasty good. Bourbon barrel aged raspberry chocolate stout. It's from Saugatuck Brewing Company, which is one of my favorites. They have another, like, maple syrup blueberry beer that's oh, good. Uh, this is tart, fruity flavors paired with a sweet chocolate decadence. Could there be a better pair? Skip right to the dessert course with this luscious raspberry chocolate stout aged in bourbon barrels for 12 months to add on, uh, to add in a... In, Essential to add an essence of vanilla, oak, and caramel. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Winona is drinking uh, mango white claw, which honestly, I probably should be because beers, I don't know if you know, give you a beer belly. Yeah, for but... the next year, we might have to do like <laughs> liquor drinks only yeah. and switch it up a little bit. <laughs> only seltzer drinks for the next six months while we gain, while we lose some weight. But... <laughs> well, cheers, Nona. Um, I'm gonna have some of this, and then I gotta pass it off to Jade. Mm -hmm. Ooh, a lot of chocolate. Well, the raspberry is just like a little hint on the end. Well, we knew Nate was gonna like it because it's chocolate and raspberry. So it's... yeah, I mean, like it's not bad. <laughs> I knew that pretty much off the get, but it's tart, not overly sweet. The sweet comes from the chocolate. The tartness comes from the raspberry. There's also a certain magic that bourbon barrels have that when you first start drinking them, you're like, oh, that's that's a lot. That's tough. I can't do that. Now I sometimes, like, crave a bourbon barrel. <laughs> do you know what the magic is called? Bourbon? Bourbon, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure that that's one of the, my favorite things that you've <laughs> ever said. <laughs> There's magic in a bourbon bottle. What is it? <laughs> well, it's bourbon, sweetie. <laughs> okay. Uh, one more. Before we get back into the chapter, do we want to do the special thing that we're talking about doing? I think it's a good idea to tease the special thing that we are talking about. Oh, but okay. I think we'll play it at the end. Okay. Jade and I have a surprise for all of you. As long as my computer is up to the task, which I believe it is. If you can, <laughs> if you can let us know how the the intro song sounded, as long as that went okay, I think we'll be fine. Yeah. If if you were here for the intro song, let us know. Was it really rough, or 
Like, did you hate it? Did you hate your life while you were listening to it? I might feel bad because if they were there for the intro song, then that means they were there, like, for the beginning. Before we were. (laughs) (laughs) I need to call. Oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be the Nate show for a second. It's going to be the Nate show. Jade needs to get a refill of her other drink. <laughs> so y'all are with me. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I j- Jenna and Aaron Duddles, what's going on, man? Jenna says, I think I was the first one here and I didn't hear the intro. Um, which, I mean, I guess kind of makes sense because we would have like hit the button immediately and then started the music and then you guys would have been notified. Uh, Aaron says, I hate it, but that has nothing to do with sound quality. <laughs> what a dick. It's just personal, I'm sure. <laughs> oh. Well, I have words with Aaron that we can't put on the podcast. Uh, yeah. Don't say bags again. (laughs) All right. So, where were we? Oh, yeah. Denna was kicking the shit out of Richard and making him bleed. Woo! (laughs) So, Richard goes through this moment of, I'm going to lock myself away, and I'm going to kind of give in to it. And then Denna changes her tack a little bit. She kisses him. Like, hard. And then she started showing him what exactly the Aegeal can do. No, no, no. Go ahead, Jade. Just pour it. (laughs) (sighs) Okay. Well, here are some of the skills that you can do with an Aegeal. If it is dragged lightly, the Aegeal makes fluid-filled welts. (laughs) Mmm. And then if you press just a little bit harder, they fill up with blood. So fun. If you push down, you just start to bleed. Okay. You know, when I read this, what it made me think about was, um, like... Ow. Well, yeah. But do you know how long it takes for, like, a blister to, like, heal and for you to get over that? Oh, I mean, yeah. So, like... Every time that she drags down his chest or whatever, there's like a big lot. Like for the next three weeks, he's gonna have a raw spot there, so he's gonna look pretty fucking rough walking through these halls. Like I don't know. I <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. It's very clear how tortured he is, but like just thinking about like the different layers of healing he's gonna have and how I don't know. There's only so much skin you have. Ugh. A lot, of, a lot of makeup. <laughs> I mean, I kind of, it's, it's internal damage, right? It's got to be. She's not beating the skin or stabbing him. She's just touching the skin and something underneath, much like the pain of the sword. It just, it just damages shit in there. I, yeah, I think it's worse than the pain of the sword because it's actually like physically harming him inside. Right. <laughs> I just read Al Meyer's comment. Like a Mord Sith would do anything in any other manner than hard. They like it hard. <laughs> she actually does say that in this chapter. She's like, oh, you're going to make this hard. I like it when you make it Good. hard. <laughs> Horny Terry's like, hey, I'm here, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm here right behind you this whole chapter. Don't you think for one second that blood and viscera is going to turn him off? Oh, no. Um, yes. Oh, and Samantha Ryan, thank you. It does mention that it can break bones without breaking the skin. Mm-hmm. So I think that's that's kind of in the same vein that it's internal damage somehow. I think that's why um, she doesn't go too hard. Well, we aren't there yet, but yeah, you, it definitely, like... Does not inter- internal damage too, because like the whole ear thing that's going to come up, it can like fuck your brain. Oh, oh, yes. yes. <laughs> okay, so she can make the same pain without leaving a mark. Yeah. So she could be doing a little bit of this, though it doesn't necessarily specify. Um, she smacked him if he opens his eyes without permission, and of course his wrists are bleeding from the shackles. Okay, so I understand. So. She is like, 
she's treating him like a battered wife. So she probably bruises up the like the internal parts, like um, all underneath where you cover him with a shirt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then like the face. It's not funny. I'm not laughing. This is nervous laughter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so like his face and stuff. He, she probably. I mean, no, she does bust his face up a little bit, but she probably doesn't like fuck it up real bad. I'm sure that. I mean. Oh, oh, you know what? Exactly. Thank you, Al. That's what I was just going to say. It does depend on intent. I think a lot of the magic that we've talked about in this book so far is based on intent. Yeah. And and I think, like you were saying, she might take it a little easy on the face as far as the bruising goes. She's handsome. I'll leave it alone. Leave him with a busted <laughs> lip and a black eye. Everyone's going to think that's super hot. I was going to say, usually a busted lip makes... Yeah, you right. got a certain, like, oh, you got into a fight, didn't you? <laughs> right. Yeah, she'll make him look like he got into a fight, but no worse than that. Internally, though, he's fucked up. Because I do think it's magical pain, but I also think, due to the welts and stuff, it is changing his body. Like, it can actually break a bone. It is leaving... These marks and bruises and yeah, like he's bleeding from his side at one point. Yeah, like it's, it's coming out of some side. Yeah, <laughs> and that's she's not a wizard, so like it'd be one thing if she was like, "I'm gonna cause these welts and then I can heal them and then make welts again," which is a whole other layer of like that would be fucked up. But she's like, no, he he has to heal from everything that she opens up. <laughs> right, <laughs> everything she opens. Oh, that's so awful. <laughs> Um, yeah, Al goes, that's what I'm here for. That and the free t-shirt. <laughs> so through all of this, Richard only loses control once. And that is when she puts the Aegeal in his armpit. Now, don't you dare do it. I am ticklish. <laughs> yeah, he is. I saw that face. Um, and that would fuck with me. <laughs> See what's gonna happen. Fuck around and find out. That would be like the worst thing ever. <laughs> no. Um. So she focuses there then, because she's like, "Oh, you don't fucking like that." Zap, zap, yeah. zap with the taze dough, and she does it more <laughs> and like numbs him to it. Yeah. As you any any sensitive part of your body that normally doesn't get touched. Is it's gonna cause you to react like that? If she got him in the gooch, he would do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that would be. Oh, that would be bad. <laughs> I'm just saying it was just an example, like because I feel like your armpit is the gooch of your That's arm. A pretty strong example. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you know what I mean? Yes. No, I understand. <laughs> I just don't like it. Oh. And drink. <laughs> so, at some point, Richard comes to terms with the fact that he's going to do anything she said if only she would stop hurting him. Like, that's the goal now. Don't get hurt. I don't care what it is you want me to do. I'll do it because I don't want to get hurt because that really fucking hurts. Well, and uh, this right here is why studies show that, like, torturing people to get the truth out of them doesn't work. Like, that's what this all comes back to. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can you can make them say anything you want yeah. them to say. After a very short period of time, they'll be like, I killed my mom. I also slept with my brother. What else should I say? <laughs> Literally whatever you want. Right, this is one day, and he's like, I'll do anything she yeah. wants. So if she went, hey, where's the box of Orden? Yeah. Well, then he would tell her. Yeah, literally anything. So the beating continues. She pulls his head back, and she tells him that she's going to put the Aegeal in his ear. She's done this before with other Mord Sith. Um, one Aegeal in each ear, but it always kills the person. And this is when she tells Richard that if he moves, it's going to scramble some stuff. She says it will damage things inside you. Inside you. Sam Chuchuvis says things sometimes that just, like, <laughs> tickle your insides in a weird way, and you're like, oh, oh, <laughs> okay. 
Yeah. Yeah.